Okay. Okay, I will share. You want to start? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are from Topology. Um, we started this journey about a year and a half ago. Um, my co-founder, um, Gilti Gyoza, and I met during um, ETH Denver um, three years ago. Um, I was working at Ethereum Foundation um, at uh, Strategy and Growth. And uh, Guilty Gyoza uh, was one of our top talents to recruit um, because um, he had a very, uh, uh, he has a lot of enthusiasm in physics. And we thought that it would be interesting to talk to him. And I happened to graduate from Harvard, and he also um, went to Harvard for um, electrical engineering PhD program. Um, which he later dropped out. Um, and so I was assigned to uh, lure him into the e Ethereum ecosystem. Um, and I think uh, that's how we started our relationship. And and, and now we're, we're starting, uh, we started a topology together. And one thing that we're really passionate about is uh, digital physics um, and putting physics uh, purely on chain. Um, uh, Guilty Gyoza was, was uh, first in the world who actually um, put um, uh, 2D physics simulation purely on chain on StarkNet uh, last year. Um, and um, he also put the first uh, inference only uh, DNN on uh, StarkNet too, uh, first time on, 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 on chain. Um, so we're doing a lot of fun experiments to um, test the frontiers and also uh, limitations of um, uh, computation that is given on, um, um, on Ethereum. Um, specifically on on Starknet, and um, yeah, I'd love to give the floor to uh, Guilty Gear just to give a small uh, introduction to himself. And um, thank you everyone for joining. I'm excited to talk to everyone at Keist, and um, I really want to thank um, Jason for giving us the floor and everyone to take this class. I know that um, Web three is not really or blah is not really um, uh, a very uh, hot topic or, or anticipated um, topic for everyone in, in the world right now. But um, I'm really excited to see the builders at this phase because it shows that you're purely interested in the technology behind it. And I thank everyone for participating and, and coming to our talk. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Goti Gilza. Thanks, uh, thanks, Kenho, for the introduction. Can can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but uh, there is a little bit jitter. Oh, Somet okay. Oh. Sometimes. Sometimes I see. Okay, we'll we'll try to speak slowly so that um um everyone can hear um clearly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do that. So um uh, um. Uh, just a little bit of my background before we we start the presentation. Um, I, I used to do physics when I was in high school. Uh, then I did uh, electrical engineering when I was in college. And uh, also, during my PhD program, I was working on uh, machine learning acceleration in uh, hardware. Um, but uh, I I left the PhD program to pursue. Uh, what really interested me. Eventually, I found blockchain, and um, it uh, occurred to me, that, and this was in 2019, that it is entirely possible and very desirable to make full-blown uh, game worlds on top of the blockchain uh, for reasons we will be mentioning later in the presentation. So basically, uh, we are working in the blockchain space, but we're working on a really niche and... Uh, uh, um, a uh, strange topic, which is creating fully on-chain worlds on blockchain as a substrate. Uh, while most other people are working on financial applications or they're making more blockchains um, and, and, and NFT stuff, if, if you have heard a little bit about that, but we're working on something more uh, uh, ambitious and, and more, much more difficult. Um, but this is where we enjoy ourselves and we hope that you will uh, uh, take a uh, a, a thing or two away from this uh, presentation. 
So should we begin? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about StarkNet uh, first because all our uh, on-chain worlds uh, and experiments have been uh, done on StarkNet. Uh, and then we will talk about our experimental fully on-chain games slash fully on-chain worlds. That include uh, Shosh uh, Isaac and Mumu and Shoshin, three separate experiments. So StarkNet ecosystem. The StarkNet ecosystem consists of StarkNet, which is a ZK rollup. Um, I think there may be a lot of technical uh, jargon in our presentation. Uh, for those interested, if, uh, We'll be happy to answer any questions afterwards. Uh, but very simply, ZK Rollup is a way to scale computation on, on top of the blockchain. Um, as you, you may have under, understood now, blockchain is a very expensive place to compute things. Uh, ZK Rollup, the role of ZK Rollup is to um, take away computation from the blockchain over to themselves and they compress a lot of computation results um, over to the blockchain so that you're saving only a little bit on the blockchain, but you're carrying out a lot of computation elsewhere on the rollup. And zero knowledge proof is involved in that uh, compression uh, operation. So that's what ZK rollup is. Um, Cairo is the programming language. Um, developers used to program on the StarkNet ZK rollup. So if you write in Cairo, the resulting program is stock provable, or in other words, ZK provable. Uh, so all these programs execution will get compressed via the Stark ZKP system to tiny, tiny bits of proofs. And these proofs are deposited on the blockchain. And because they're tiny, it's much cheaper to, to be put on the blockchain. Uh, the way we like to understand StarkNet versus Ethereum, which um, I think uh, you all have a good familiarity with what Ethereum is at, the, at this point, um, is that um, it, we, we see Ethereum as a DDR4 drive uh, with, a, with a small CPU. So you can, comp you can compute stuff on, on it. Right? And DDR4 drive is you know, the, the, the hard drive in computers and laptops. They are uh, robust. You can uh, shake it. You can uh, drop it on the floor; it doesn't break, so it's hard. It's uh, it's safe. It's secure. That's what we think Ethereum is. But it's expensive, and it's expensive to compute on it. So Starknet's role is to compute on a much faster rate, but on a much smaller memory. So we call it SRAM, CPU, and an SRAM. Um, for those of you who have taken computer architecture classes, you may understand this sort of uh, hierarchy. Uh, 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 among computation. Um, but then writing programs on, on the CPU and SRAM, which then executes and then settle on the hard drive is much more um, uh, uh, efficient than writing programs on the hard drive itself, right? No, no one uh, uh, on, on, in the modern days write programs that run in the hard drive. We all run programs in the memories. Uh, you buy a Mac laptop, you specify how much RAM you want. That's that's the RAM. That's not a hard drive. Um, so this is what we think StarkNet is. Um, another way to understand uh, what StarkNet is through this hierarchy of layers that we use to understand blockchain. So on the bottom, you have power acceleration. This is how, how people make blockchain uh, run fast. On top of that, there's the operating system. So... Uh, blockchain sequencing and roll-up sequencing, these are considered as operating system layer uh, operations. Um, on top of that, you have proving and prove every. So this is the ZKP part, the uh, part of the ZK roll-up uh, stack. Um, arithmetiz arithmetization is also part of the ZKP stack. Um, just to touch upon it very, very briefly, arithmeti arithmetization is basically the process of taking a program and transform it into a form that you can uh, make proof of. So regular programs cannot be proven, but after repetized, they can be proven. And then on top of that, you have programming language. This is where Cairo sits. And then on top of that, these green areas are applications. So there are libraries and uh, hyperstructure. It's just uh, it's a, it's a way to describe all these 
uh, uh, public goods infrastructure built on top of the blockchain uh, front ends is where applications are, are presented to the end user. And we think StarkNet occupies these stacks. So StarkNet provide Cairo here, uh, arithmetization and proving are achieved by a stock proof system. StarkNet itself is an operating system because it sequences transactions and, and, and mediates access right and so on. Um, and it, it also wants to touch upon hardware acceleration, but I think it doesn't, it's, it's on the roadmap, but it hasn't touched upon this bottom layer just yet. Um, right, so um, the reason why we choose StarkNet is because obviously we can compute a lot more uh, effectively on the blockchain by doing things on StarkNet. So what, what do we mean by doing a lot more? So for example, we can do physics. So this is a, uh, a numerical simulation of a rigid body system uh, connected by springs, right? So like spring is like this linear system whose uh, force is, you know, like proportional to the displacement of the string, but like by force order, right? So we can write a, a, a system of equation that describe how these rigid body interact and we can run numerical simulation uh, frame by frame by frame how these bodies are moving along and applying forces among each other. So this is like classic numerical simulation. If you've taken courses in the area, uh, this should be pretty familiar. But we are writing this numerical simulation in a Cairo contract that runs on StarkNet. So, if, so effectively, you can run physics on StarkNet by doing this. And on the right, we've, we've done a little bit about DNN. Um, so this is a, a, the vanilla tiny DNN uh, two-layer uh, uh, like one hidden layer DNN that takes the MNIST imp as input and outputs the predictions. MNIST is this, uh, for those who uh, kind of understand basics machine learning, MNIST is this library of handwritten digits, like 20 by 20 uh, a pixel uh, uh, large. So basically this DNN is able to take a image and predict what digit it is from zero to nine. And we were able to um, take a DNN model and transform that into a bunch of Cairo contracts that collectively represent the DNN model. And we put these contracts on StarkNet so that when you interact with these contracts on StarkNet, they give you the prediction that you can basically provide the input image and it, it provides you with the prediction. Uh, some examples of open source projects on, on the StarkNet uh, ecosystem uh, so there's ZK EVM. Um, uh, it will be interest if you're interested. Uh, highly recommend looking into the topic of ZK EVM. That's one of the hot, hot topics right now in the industry. Uh, there are different libraries that are making uh, so parent libraries for cryptography. Sequencer is kind of like operation uh, operation operating system level. Um, there's MLIR compiler. So this, this will be able to make Cairo a much more uh, hardware agnostic programming language because multi-level IR works on uh, almost all uh, x86 architecture machines. Um, the reason why we want to mention open source project is because the best way to learn Cairo is to participate in projects and work on it directly. Um, so uh, for those interested, go to this URL uh, github.com keep starkness strange and you'll be able to find all these open source projects and read their source code and contribute to it uh, as part of your uh, learning journey uh, we recommend two steps learning Cairo uh, step one is go through Starkling so Starkling is this interactive tutorial uh, if you program in Rust you know there's a Rustling tutorial uh, Starkling will work in a similar way so it sort of interact with you to teach you uh, syntax and language features of Cairo um, and then build something, build something and tweet about your, your, your work because uh, the Starkin ecosystem is very a very vibrant space. Uh, the culture is really friendly. If you build something, people will share and, and, and interact with you and, and share uh, your experiences. And building something is the best way to learn something in, in the world of computer science. So now moving on to um, our uh, experimental fully on-chain games. The first game that we did um, last summer was uh, Isaac. So Isaac is uh, is this ambitious experiment where we ran um, three body simulations. 
if, if for those of you who are in, who are uh, uh, interested in three body problem, it's uh, imagine a galaxy, um, imagine a solar system, but instead of having one sun, there are three suns. Right? So there are three suns, and every planet is being pulled by these three suns and revolving or revolving around these suns in a chaotic manner. So we had this game where players have to work together to uh, sort of pilot their planet around the sun to avoid getting sucked into the sun. Um, but then we we had TPS issues. So this experiment gave us a lot of insight into what was suitable to be made on the blockchain and what, what is not, not that suitable to be made on, on top of the blockchain. So we move on to Mumu. Uh, Mumu is a different world where the physics is not you know gravity and and like like newton newton uh, uh, laws of uh, gravity the, the physics here is more abstract uh, 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 it's about how things transform to one another and how these little hands can move around and pick things up and put things down these are abstract physics but we were able to make this into an experiment and our players are able to construct these pipelines that are transforming materials into different materials and deliver them from the, the the source to the destination. So this game is, this world slash game is about making a production pipeline that transforms and deliver things according to the, the formulas and according to the rules. So we have all these uh, players contributing to solutions and their solutions that deliver amount uh, uh, at, at various different, very, uh, various different performance. Uh, they cost differently. They 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 cost different uh, time to deliver and so on. So these are different player created uh, solutions or or inventions in the world. Um, and the recent experiment that we are working on is called Shoshin. So Shoshin is a two D fighting game, but you play by designing AI agents and the agents play against themselves. It's an automatic fighting, if you will. Um, the concept is pretty uh, uh, analogous to uh, um, sort of the, the the formal model in the reinforcement learning or slash uh, uh, aut autonomous agent uh, uh, literature. So you have a mind and the mind is making decision on intent and the intent sort of drives the body and the body interacts with other bodies according to the physics of the world. So this is what happens in a single frame. So the brain would drive the body, the body would move it, move around the world according to physics, um, and then you move to the next frame. Okay, uh, so uh, the game is played by you design, you as a player, design and submit the mind. And in the Cairo VM, which is the, um, the small contract running on StarkNet, um, every single frame, it will do the it will do the following four things. It will take perceptibles from the environment um, uh, into the mind and compute. The result will be intent, like what the mind's mind wants to do. That's the intent, and the intent will go to the body and drives the body, and that 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 will result in the body moving around according to physics. And then some physics simulation is carried out so that different bodies are punching each other or moving around according to friction and gravity. Uh, housekeeping is the last step, which sort of track uh, which player has how, uh, has how much health point and stamina, uh, like, like game level uh, housekeeping information. And then you loop this four step every single frame until someone wins or until the, 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 the round ends. Um, perceptible include your own information, your whereabouts, your health point stamina, what your body is doing and so on, and also your opponents. So basically everything that can be observed ab about the world are included in the perceptibles. So from perceptibles, um, um, the these perceptibles are processed by the mind. And so the question will be, well, what is the, how is the mind structure, right? Like. Uh, our mind is structured by biological processes like neurons and signals. Uh, if you talk about GPT-4, the, the, their mind is structured by neural networks, uh, a, a lot of neural networks, huge neural networks. Um, in, in, in Shoshin, the mind is like a state machine, and state machines is where 
state can transition to other states according to different conditions and rules. So we sort of model a mind by a state machine. Um, so the perceptibles will influence what the mind will transition into different states. Um, binary tree uh, is just a way that we represent programs in Cairo. So because we want the players to be able to create uh, their own sort of mind transition rule, and these rules are described by in the form of binary tree, or uh, 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 alternatively, you can call this abstract syntax tree or AST. These are trees that are formed by operators, and every leaf is an uh, is an operand. Okay, so after the perceptibles and mind, you have the body. Right? So again, mind would produce the intent, what it wants to do, and this intent will influence the body. Um, the body is also modeled by a finite state machine, and this is sort of convention to uh, the uh, game industry. So usually in the game industry, um, animation systems are controlled by finite state machines. And then we have dynamics. Dynamics is just our way of uh, describing physics. So we have uh, functions written in Cairo that simulates how these rigid bodies move around and interact and collide. Uh, we do only first order approximation so that uh, because in video games, you don't have to be super like scientifically precise. As long as the game works, it works. So early footages of Shoshin, uh, we're doing um, uh, early play testing now. These are footages uh, from before the play testing. Um, so this is, this is the interface uh, with which player create their mind the strategies. Uh, this is where the player define the conditions. The conditions are involved in the mind. And this is a footage where you have two AI fighting against each other. And if, 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 if you notice the female character here doesn't get hit at all. The reason is according to the digital physics of Shoshin, uh, when the female character is dashing, she is invincible. Like if you play fighting game, you 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 will have the concept of invincible frames, right? You the uh, as certain conditions, we would do something, the frames, uh, while you are doing that thing, are invincible. You cannot be hit by any uh, other moves. You cannot be interrupted. So the female character's dashing happens to be invincible. So he she is dashing into the male character's sword swing and then uh, swing against the male character. And this is uh, another instance of digital physics. This is where the mirror character is able to block with the great sword and because it's so heavy, it knocks away his opponent. And this is programmed into the digital physics that is described in the Cairo smart contract on the blockchain. Uh, this is just the frame data that player can inspect uh, what every single player is doing frame by frame. So like at a current frame, player one is uh, uh, inhabiting attack state in his mind. Uh, player one's body is in idle state, uh, how much stamina, uh, uh, health point, and so on and so forth. Because player needs a way to debug their agent, need to understand what works and what doesn't work. And this is just the visualizing sort of the thought process of an agent in the frame. So like in this current frame, this player is thinking about, is opponent attacking? No. Uh, is my distance uh, 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 from my opponent less than one, 100? No. If Is my distance not less than 100 from my opponent? Yes. So I will stay in the closer state. This is what the agent is thinking at the frame. So we are currently playtesting. Uh, this QR code will uh, uh, bring you to a form. Uh, if you fill the form, uh, we'll be able to let you in uh, on the wait list and we will um, inform you when the playtest is ready for you. Uh, we're also focusing on re-architecting the entire system in Cairo 1. So Cairo uh, has two major versions, Cairo 0 and Cairo 1. Cairo 1 is like Rust. So for those of you who like pr programming in Rust, Cairo 1 will be a, a pretty tasty language for you. Uh, we are re-architecting everything in Cairo 1. Specifically, we want to uh, we, we want to make something that we're calling application-specific VM. Because if you think about it, Shoshin is not just a game for you to play. Shoshin is, feels like a platform that you create agents on top that battles uh, uh, between each other. 
And these agents are themselves programmed, right? So Shoshin itself sort of ha has to have its own VM so that it's very uh, flexible to be programming on top. So this is sort of how we imagine uh, Shoshin becoming its own VM to support uh, a genericity uh, among these agent programs. Um, another, another thing we want to touch upon is client-side proving. Um, this is part of the ZKP uh, uh, industry notion that says, instead of proving ZK proving your compute elsewhere, you can prove your compute on your client machine, on your laptop, on your smartphone, and so on. And so what's the benefit of client-side proving? It allows you to hide information, right? Because after proving, the outcome is a little proof that does not reveal any information about the incoming, uh, the original computation. So if you prove your compute on your local machine, you're only giving away proofs and you're leaking no information to other people. So why is this important for Shoshin? You can imagine two agents going into a fight, but these agents' mind is known only by its creator. They're opaque to everyone else in the world. Just like in, in the real world, we can never look into other people's brain and mind. Uh, there's no such superpower yet. So if we want to have that, you know, the, the inability to look into other people's mind, uh, we need to uh, look into client-side proving to preserve that information. And lastly, uh, in, in, in fighting games, uh, art is really important and also the moveset. So the different moves that a character can make is really important. So we're working, we're working with a very talented artist to expand and redesign our character concept. And this will play into the digital physics, you know, that describe what each character can do and cannot do. So this is it. This is the QR code to join Waylist and uh, we're happy to answer any question. Uh, is this the end of the presentation? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, okay, we, didn't, okay. we didn't have any extra slides. Yeah. Okay. So is there any question? Actually, we have a few, uh, audience, so mm -hmm. you can ask a question with your voice. <laughs> Yeah, or if anyone wants to do a short introduction about themselves, we can ask, answer any questions regarding, I think, uh, ZK rollups, um, Cairo VM, um, or StarkNet specifically. Um, I know that there are um, questions regarding ZK VMs or ZK EVM. So, um, what the difference could be, we'd love to answer those questions too. Um, or if anyone has questions about, uh, there's some uh, verbiage that is being thrown out, uh, thrown around in the industry, such as autonomous worlds or fully on-chain games or uh, web 3.0 game or web 2.5 games. Um, these are a lot of confusing words that are being thrown around. Um, so if you guys need clarifications, we'd love to answer those too. Okay, first I will uh, turn off the recording so you can easily uh, ask questions.